Hey guys, Kurt Stubbs here with Talking Tigers, your below average analysis site. Uh, guys, what I did here was had a few minutes just messing around with some numbers. Um, looking at the Division One Region Three, so that's what I focused on because that's where Pick Central's at. So, got some playoff projections here. Um, now, I know there's great sites out there like joeitel.com um, that's fantastic, uh, that has up-to-date computer points, but this kind of brings the human element into it where I'm making predictions of these games. So, for example, um, all these teams have two games left, so I'm predicting those games for each of those 18 teams in the region. And then every team in the region has won at least one game um, so you have a range of one to seven, Gahanna with the most with seven wins. So um, I'm predicting if a team has one win, I'll take a look at that team and predict their two games moving forward. It gets a little tricky with like Gahanna with seven wins. You have to look at seven teams, so that's two games apiece. So that's 14 games that you're predicting um, on Gahanna's second level. So here is what I came up with in... These are the average projections after week 10. Of course, these um, are subject to change. So the two teams, according to my projections, that would be on the outside looking in are Westland and Newark. Of course, that could change depending on the outcome of some of these games. Some things that factor into these projections um, these projections, once I have the actual results from week nine, um, I'll redo the projections um, based off those results. This uh, division one is, is not easy, is not as easy to predict as the other divisions because so many of these teams, the separation is so little um, that mo a lot of these games could go, you could, you could drum me up a scenario and I'd be like, yeah, I could see that. Um, so the, these games are really hard to predict, which obviously, you know, you get a couple of the the bigger game, you know, the bigger point games wrong. That's gonna that's gonna throw the projections off a little bit. Um, like I said, several variables and moving parts to this process. So like when you you look at this, like for example, the parity in this region, the 13 beat the two, 42 to 15. Um, the one and the six both beat the 14 by uh, each by seven points. The nines beat the five. So, you know, like I said, with these predictions, it's really difficult. So if my projections were accurate, this is what the first, this is what the bracket would look like in Division One, Region 3. So you can see Pick Central there at the three, uh, hosting Central Crossing. You got Pick North of the two hosting Reynoldsburg. Um, if you recall, uh, the first two rounds, the higher seed will host at their site. So obviously, with Gehanna, that's going to be a little different because they're they're uh, they've played away from home with their their facilities being redone. But that's how the bracket would look based off my projections. So I'll give you an idea. Here's a sample of one of the, so this is Pick Central. So theirs was a little bit easier than the other teams because I feel like their two games um, that they have remaining are pretty predictable. Uh, with Lancaster and Reynoldsburg, I have those both as wins. That's what this W over Lancaster, W over Reynoldsburg. Um, Again, both rivals, um, I just feel like, you know, the, the talent gap between these two teams and Pick Central is uh, wide enough to feel confident that both of these are going to be wins. So that's big because both of these are uh, D1s, which are six and a half points on the first level. So that would be 13 more first level points added to what they already have. So that would end up being 45.5. When you divide that by 10, you get 4.55. So then I looked at the teams that Pick Central beat, which are these five teams thus far, Liberty, Pick North, Newark, Central Crossing, and Groveport. 
And I looked at the two teams that they have remaining for each of those five. And like I said, I mean, you look at this, like Liberty uh, plays Davidson in orange. I'm predicting win-win. You could tell me that, that they end up 0-2, 2-0, 1-1, wouldn't be shocked. Pick North again. Pick the win over uh, New Albany, lost to Gehanna. Pick North could easily be 2-0. They could be 1-1. They could be 0-2. Any of those scenarios would play out. Um, and I went down and did that. You know, Groveport, I have a win over Newark, win over Central Crossing. Central Crossing um, is a team. I have a loss in both of these games. They could very easily win both of these games. Um, but in conference play, you're kind of just canceling things out. Like, it, you know, like with Pick Central, if they beat all the teams in the conference, they're going to they're gonna get the max points because those teams are just going to – you're always going to have a winner – uh, they're always going to get points in one of the game in in the game from one of the teams. So um, they currently have 122nd level. Uh, if my predictions are right, they'll end up with 185. Their level two divisor is 100. So you divide that by 100, times it by 10, you get 18.5. Add that to the 4.55, and you end up with their final average of 23.05. Obviously, these games here going different directions could either lessen this or raise this number. Um, final thing I want to look at here, these are teams with a legitimate chance for big moves. Like you look at Gehanna, they have a game, you know, they're, they're in a top spot. They have Grove City, Pick North, uh, five wins and six wins. Pick North could be a huge mover. New Albany and Gehanna, that's 13 total wins between those two teams. Uh, New Albany has one with Pick North, Thomas Worthington with Dublin and Berlin. Grove City has a big game with Gehanna. Um, Upper Arlington, you look at a team like Upper Arlington, they have Kaufman and Davidson left. They could be 2-0, 1-1, 0-2, all those scenarios uh, wouldn't be crazy Hilliard Darby is a team at 4-4 four and four that could be a huge mover. They have 6-win Thomas Worthington and 7-win Jerome. If they're able to win those two games, you're looking at a team, this team could be one of the biggest movers depending on how they fare in these two games. And then you have Davidson, uh, Bradley, and Central also with some big games left. So that's a look at Division I Region 3. Like I said, I'll update this based on the actual results from week nine, and then have the projections heading into week 10.